Sometimes when we're completing the square, we're going to run across a coefficient of our x squared term. This can make completing the square a little bit messy, but we can still handle it. We're going to start things off just like normal. Adding 5 to each side, we're going to get 2x squared plus 20x equals 5. Now, before we divide this b term by 2, we need to make this x squared have a coefficient of 1. How we do that is we factor out this 2 or this coefficient. That'll give us 2 times x squared plus 10x rather than this 2x squared plus 20x. From there, we proceed like normal. 10 is our b term, so we're going to take that 10. We're going to divide it by 2. That'll give us 5. Then we square that 5. 5 times 5 is 25. And this is what we're going to add to each side of the equation. This is where it gets a little interesting. We add that 25 to the left inside our parentheses. That's x squared plus 10x plus 25. Now instead of adding 25 to the right, what we need to do is see what we actually did. We added 25 inside the parentheses, but we had already factored out this 2. So if we distributed this 2 to the 25, we can see that we actually added 50 to the left-hand side. So what we're going to do is add 50 to the right-hand side of the equation to keep it balanced. From there, we still have our 2 times x plus 5 times x plus 5. If we factor that, that's x plus 5 squared equals the 5 plus 50 is 55. Now to continue solving, we could divide each side by 2 to isolate that, isolate that squared term. Continuing, let's square root each side. That'll leave us with x plus 5 equals plus or minus square root of 55 over 2. And subtracting the 5 over, we're going to be left with x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 55 over 2. While we might be able to simplify this a bit, we're going to go ahead and leave it. It's okay. So you can see very similar to completing the square with the coefficient of 1, the main thing you want to watch out for is factoring out that coefficient and then instead of adding that same number to each side, you'll have to take into account that you had factored before and distribute to know how to keep the equation balanced. Let's try one more of these. Here we've got 6y squared minus 5y minus 4 equals 0. Moving over that c constant term, we get 6y squared minus 5y equals 4. Now let's make sure this y squared term has a coefficient of 1 by factoring out a 6. Doing that, we take the 6 out. That leaves us with y squared minus. Now 6 can't be factored out of 5 traditionally, so what we do here is just say 5 divided by 6y. You can see if we distribute this out, we'll get 6y squared minus 6 times 5, 6y, which would bring us right to 5y. So if you end up with a fraction, that's okay. Still factor that coefficient out, and we're good to go from here. Equals 4. From here, let's take our b term. In this case, that's going to be 5, 6, and divide that by 2. Doing that, we'll get 5 twelfths. That's 5, 6 divided by 2, or times 1 half, to get 5 twelfths. Squaring that 5 twelfths, that's 5 over 12 times 5 over 12, we get 25 over 144. And as messy as it is, this is what we want to add to both sides. That brings us to 6 times y squared minus 5, 6 plus 25 over 144. And when we add that to the right side, we have to do 6 times 25 over 144, which is going to be 150 over 144. All right. Keep on pushing through. I know fractions can get messy, but we know how to deal with them. Getting common denominators here, 4 over 1 is the same as times 144 over 144. Adding those together, we get equal to 726 over 144. All right, got to divide by 6. That's the same as multiplying by 1 6. Simplifying that out, we get equal to 121 over 144. All right, hang in there. Square root both sides of your equation. It looks like we're going to get lucky. This is not going to be too difficult after all. We see that 121 square root is 11. 144 square rooted is 12. So we get y minus 5 twelfths equals plus or minus 11 twelfths. Adding that 5 twelfths over, we finally get y equals 5 twelfths plus or minus 11 twelfths. One last adding, subtracting, and simplifying. We get our final answer, y equals negative 1 half or four thirds. Whoo! You get a gold star for hanging in there on that one. Okay, so anyway, same kind of processes. You might have to deal with some fractions. You might have to deal with some factoring. But once you get the hang of them, they're not too bad. Feel free to use your calculator to help you with some of the arithmetic.